Hi guys, my name is Chad Trofgerben. I am the founder and content creator for IncredibleTutorials.com. I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 9 tutorials. So let's get started. The Style panel in Anime Studio Pro allows us to adjust the style properties of our objects. This includes the fill color, stroke color, line width, brush types, effects, and we can even choose from a variety of color swatches. To get started with this demonstration, I will take my Select Shape tool and select the head of this character. Now coming over to my Style panel, I can choose the fill color, stroke color, and line width. To do this, I can click on the colors next to each section and choose a color. And also I can adjust the line width by entering in a number. Now for our brush types, if I click on the no brush box, we have access to a wide selection of brushes. As you can see right now, my brush looks pretty solid. However, if I select the second option, it looks a little bit more dirty or messy. There are several brush types to choose from. Once you find a brush you like, you can adjust some of the options below. The jitter angle, for instance, if I adjust this, makes the angles less dominant. If I adjust the brush spacing, makes the brush not look like one consistent stroke. Minimize frame to frame randomness will minimize the effect of a wobble when you go from frame to frame in your animation. So if that's a concern for you, you may want to check that. So once you've dealt with your options, click OK. You'll now notice my character has an outline that looks like it was drawn in chalk or some other type of drawing tool. Next we have the style effects. So let me click on the head again with my select shape tool and come over here to the effect drop down menu. From here we have all sorts of different effects. Shaded, soft edge, halo, gradient, image texture, drop shadow, crayon, splotchy, and spots. So you have a pretty big selection of effects to choose from. I'll demonstrate a few of these. Once you get the hang of some, it's easy to use the rest. First, I'll start with Shaded. Shaded, as the name implies, creates a shade effect for the object. You can adjust the angle of the shade by using the light angle dial. You can increase or decrease the offset. Decreasing it gives you less shade. And you can also adjust the blur effect. In this case, if I put it to zero, you can see that there's absolutely no blur effect taking place. And finally, you can adjust the shadow color. Also, you can adjust the transparency of the shadow in this box as well. So if I go up to here, that makes it completely solid. And if you select shadow only, that will get rid of your object and just leave the shaded effect. And you can now see I have the shade on my character. Next, let's look at the gradient effect. But before I do that, I should make sure I have my character head selected. Here you can choose the type of gradient plus the colors for the gradient. A gradient is basically a transition of two or more colors. As you can see in my preview, it goes from white to black in between those two colors. If I go to type, I can choose linear, radial, reflected, and angle. Radial goes from the center outward. Reflected gives us an effect like this, where it looks like the white color gets reflected back outward. And angle gives us a look like this. I'll choose radial for this example. And now I need to adjust the colors. So all I have to do is double click on the swatches to assign new colors.
If you need an extra color, you can click to create an additional swatch. Once you've done all that, click OK, and now the gradient has been applied. Now, in order to adjust the gradient, you can use the Select Shape tool. A line with two red dots will appear. The dark red dot indicates the center of the gradient, while you can move the other dot to increase or decrease the size of the gradient. Now let's look at the image texture effect. So I'll click on my head once again, go to the effect drop down menu, and choose image texture. From here, I can select an image, and choose tile or don't repeat. If you have small images that can't take up the whole shape, you can choose tile to repeat that small image over and over. Don't repeat will fill the whole thing in. And now my alien has a tattoo of a cat on his head. I'll choose one more effect, so I'll click my head here, and I'll change my fill color, as well as the stroke. And I'll get rid of the brush type. Now, if I go to Effect, Spots, you can see that we can create some spots on the selected object. You can choose the length of the spots, the width, the length spacing, width spacing, the angle on which they occur, so you could just move them like this, and so on. And finally, you can also change the color of the spots. And once you do that, you can click OK. And when you render the object out, you can see that the spots have been applied. Moving on to the color swatches, you have a few to choose from. If you click the drop down menu, and for instance choose Dusk, you'll get a picture that you can click on to grab colors from. This would be great if you're trying to create a scene that's at dusk. And you can do this for a number of different swatches. Now if you click the advanced checkbox, you're given access to a bunch of different options. First, as you can see, you can apply two effects at once. You also have the ability to turn round caps off, which by default is turned on. What this will do is when you make a line, the end will be rounded. If you deselect this option, the ends will be square. And finally, you can save styles and shapes as well. So if we click on this face, we can name it. So we can name it New and hit Enter. And now in the Shapes box, we have the new shape. And to further demonstrate what this does, I'll click off and then go back to the Shapes dialog box and choose New, and you can see it automatically selects that shape. You can also save the styles. As you can see, the new style is there as well. So if you ever create an object and you want to apply this style to that new object, all you have to do is select it from the drop-down menu. And that wraps up this lesson on the style panel. If you have more questions regarding Anime Studio, please check out the official Anime Studio website. Thanks for watching guys, stay tuned for more tutorials, and I'll see you next time.